Hey guys, it is Sebastian from Ask Sebi, and today we are going to talk about the new intro bonus for the American Express Green Business Card. For me, it is not that competitive. I think you can put a word in there that is pretty self-explanatory, and it earns a pretty big yikes. Before we dive into it though, if you do want to support our channel, very easy way to do that would be to give this video a thumbs up, lets me know that you like stuff like this and stops people from hiding content and not showing the information that you guys need to see. On a serious note, it does help with the channel and helps with videos getting discovered. I don't really want people applying for this offer even though it might sound good because it's not that competitive. Also, in case you're wondering, this question came from Instagram where I ended up asking people what type of topics they wanted to see. If you want your question to be featured in a next video, feel free to follow our Instagram. You can also see some of our travel stuff and we are in Hanoi. We're at 5,300 followers and I'm trying to get to 6,000 or ideally 10,000 so I get the swipe up feature. Diving back into the green card, some people are marketing this offer as 150,000 points as the intro bonus. And I kind of get it, but it's not really fair to say that. The reason they're saying that is because the new offer right now, until it ends, until they change it probably after this video, is that you're going to earn 3x back on up to $50,000 of spends within these three categories. For people driving, that's going to be dining, flights booked in a specific way, as well as hotels booked in a specific way. The reason this is not a good bonus is because I actually think the old offer was a bit better even though it didn't seem that substantial. The card itself is not that competitive and the fact that there are just a lot of other options that are going to offer a better fit. If you're someone who is under 524 then I think ink cards offer substantially more value. Yes, it might not be for those multipliers but the thing is for multipliers you need to spend a substantial amount of money in order for them to make sense. For most people you're better off just going for that intro bonus given how it works, given the return on spend. So the green business card, 150,000 points if you spend $50,000, but you could also get the Ink Cash, Ink Unlimited, and Ink Preferred card, get 180,000 chase points and spend substantially less. 5,000 plus 3,000 plus 3,000 is $11,000 in spend compared to 50,000 in spend. And the benefit of the chase system is that you can downgrade these cards so you have outs, you have options if it doesn't make sense in the future. Let's say you are way past 524 and you can't get any of those cards. Even with an American Express system, there are just better cards that fit the bill a bit better. If you're someone who doesn't want to pay any annual fees at all, the Blue Business Plus card earns you 2x back on up to $50,000. And again, no annual fee, so it makes it a lot easier to justify in the long term. If you're someone who can use personal cards, then the Personal Gold card, and then maybe adding in the Personal Platinum card, might be a bit better given that they have pretty reasonable, effective annual fees once you use the credits. On the surface, they're pretty scary annual fees, but for most people, you probably are able to use some of these credits, making it a lot more reasonable. Even on the American Express business card side, I'd probably recommend the gold business card over the green one, just because of how the multipliers work. You can earn 4x back, there is a cap, but it just makes more sense. If you're someone dropping a lot of money on these categories, you're probably dropping that throughout the year anyways. So why would you want it to be capped off for this next three months? So you're going to do it anyways. Mathematically, run the numbers, it should make sense. The reason I'm talking about this is because it has that big flashy intro bonus that I know some people are going to mention, but I just don't really think it's that fair. The best analogy for this that I can think of on the spot is, imagine if someone offered you the ability to buy any item from Apple for free. So let's say you had a voucher and you can turn it into anything. Yes, this might be okay, but when you can redeem it for a MacBook, why would you not do that? You can probably argue semantics, but to me, I'm taking the MacBook or iPhone versus AirPods. If you do want to learn more about any of the other cards that we talked about, Chase Ink Cash, Ink Unlimited, Ink Preferred, MX Gold Business Card, Personal Gold Card, Personal Platinum Card, Blue Business Plus Card, any of the other very competitive options and you want to support our channel, a very easy way to do that would be to use the links that are on our website, asksebi.com, as well as the ones down below in the description box. This also ties into the fact that this probably is one of the least competitive cards in American Express's portfolio. I know some people are going to argue this in the comments, people who have the card, but I think if you take off any hats you have, any biases you have, you're going to see that it's not that great. It has a $95 annual fee, there's no downgrade pass for it because it pretty much is the downgrade path and the multipliers aren't competitive. 
I think the only people I'd recommend this card to, and even then I probably would recommend other cards, are people who have a lot of spend every month and who don't want a set limits. If you're someone running $100,000 through the card because you have to for business stuff, then maybe, but I feel like at that point, the gold business card and the platinum business card probably make a bit more sense and you're probably going to get multipliers that work a bit better for you. Your mileage is going to vary based off the type of business you run as well as the type of spend you have. Outside of this very specific group, I think for normal people, for most small businesses, it's just not a competitive card. It's not something I'd recommend unless you wanted that extra sign up bonus and you just don't really care. You're at that point where one extra inquiry doesn't really hurt you enough compared to the extra bonus you're getting. If that's the case, this ties back to the fact that I think the old bonus is a bit better just because it's more of a traditional bonus that we've seen. Obviously it can change and we've seen it change, but 5,000 points is still 5,000 points. Not really the highest number that we've seen on anything, but it's pretty straightforward and for most people you're probably getting value out of it. Sometimes I wonder who decides on what benefits and perks American Express cards have because it doesn't feel like they're talking with each other. I have a feeling that they're siloed off. So let's say the green card has a team, the gold business card has a team, the green business card has a team. They all have different people working on it. And that's why you see these cards that don't really complement each other, but instead they're competitive. If you think about American Express, they don't really want things that compete with their own products. You want things that complement each other, that work together. That way people want to have more of your cards rather than less of them. And again, I might be wrong. I have no clue what the structure looks like over there but just some of the decisions don't really make sense to me. One tangent before we wrap up the video is that's also why we see different teams give you different messages. So let's say you are someone who gets a mailer for a product saying that, hey, you should sign up for this card. We are going to approve you or we want to approve you. And then when you apply, you end up getting rejected. It's because marketing and underwriting have different criteria that they're looking for. In a lot of cases, marketing is doing a spray and pray tactic where they just want as many people to get the mailer and to apply for the card because that's the metric they're looking for, number of applications, while underwriting is looking for good people. Good probably isn't the right word, but credit worthy people who aren't going to defaults. Same thing with financial reviews. One team might be like, hey, you need to spend a lot of money in order to hit that intro bonus. And the other team is kind of freaked out because why are you spending so much money so quickly when you're a new customer? We don't know what you're doing. Let's hit you with that financial review. Wrapping this up, if you want to learn more about any of the cards that we talked about, the Inc. ones ever looking for bonuses or the other American Express cards ever looking for the same multipliers, very easy way to support our channel would be to use the links that are down below in the description box as well as the ones that are on our website, asksebi.com. Hopefully that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is what are your thoughts on this card? What would you change to make it more competitive? Let me and the community know down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't followed our Instagram, feel free to go do that at asksebi. There should also be a video on Brian's channel where we ended up doing a shared video. So go check that out after this one if you're still interested. And thumbs up, hopefully you guys liked it. See you guys next time.